the road to war. Because those voices don't speak for the rest of us. You and I know and do not believe that life is so dear and peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery. Welcome to another episode of Freedom Radio. Hi there, Brother Logan. We started out telling everyone how vastly different we stand politically. After that, we've been agreeing for two years or more uh, about everything. And uh, whenever we, we do a, like a political compass or whatever, you see that vast difference that we claim. Uh, and uh, we have also tried to explain our politics to each other. So the question is, is our agreement based on a total misunderstanding of the other one? Uh, so it's time to turn this around. I'm going to try to explain your politics to you. And then you can evaluate how close to the bullseye I get or if I'm totally off, you know. So are you ready for it? All right, Carl, let's see what you have to say. We'll see how correct you may be. Here we go. Patriotism is good because it opposes globalism. You are conservative but libertarian within the conservative spectrum. Your libertarianism starts where the Ten Commandments ends. I'll henceforth call you libertarian because that is what stands out within your conservatism. You believe in America first. But you don't think that the French, for example, should believe in America first. They should believe in France first, because that is the job that we hire our representatives to do, work for our nations. You are what Steven Crowder would call a recovering libertarian. That means that you believe in the ideal broadly, but you don't believe it can be applied in practice to everything all the time. There, there has to be rules because the, the, the point of the government is to protect the liberties of the individuals. So, for example, if, uh, if an absolutely free market means that slave labor in foreign totalitarian evil dictatorships push out your own industry there must be something to stop that. Your patriotism is where your libertarianism ends. You want taxes to be as low as possible, provided that the basics work, like military, law and order, roads, grid, and such. You believe in caring for the needing, but that that is a job for the community rather than for the state, and it's a job for the state rather than for the federal. You feel that American military intervention on the world stage should be kept to a minimum, but there are also exceptions. And when such exceptions occur, it is either pragmatic or moral reasons. This is much like your exceptions to the libertarian principle. Finally, one could say that your prio of your nation over other nations is a macro version of your family over other families. Yeah, that's it. That's how I, that's how I understand you, and uh, now you get to tell me that I'm wrong. <laughs> Bye. So I think you have hit the nail on the head pretty well with just about everything that you said concerning my politics. You're pretty well dead on on everything. Um, I think what you said is a very good explanation um, and analogy about how I view government in the same way as a man views his family from a Christian ethos primarily and solely, um, you know, it starts at home, the family, um, and there's a structure that has to be, that works, that is God-ordained, um, and that should be reflected in how we 
uh, deal with other nations and with those within our own nation. Um, so kudos, very good on that. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want for nothing. He Rinse makes me lie down evil. in the green pasture. And, and those who cause violence, violence my head with oil. He gives me food in the face of my You and I know, and do not believe that life is so dear and peace so sweet that can be purchased at the price of chains and slavery. Read your Bible. Believe in God. Read your Constitution. Hold them dear to your heart. The price of refusing the cross.